Hello and welcome to the presentation. Today we're going to be covering an introduction to the SIM Manager Suite. These are CAD management tools for Civil 3D and AutoCAD. My name is Brian Lewandowski and I'm going to be doing the presentation for you today. So the SIM Manager Suite, what is this? This is a suite of tools and commands that install as a ribbon right within Civil 3D. And some of these even install if you have base AutoCAD on your computer. Some of them will install in there as well. These are CAD manager tools, as I said, for Civil 3D and for AutoCAD. So some of the stuff we're doing is specific to Civil 3D functions and commands. Other stuff is base AutoCAD, which obviously applies in Civil 3D, but applies to uh, base AutoCAD as well. We're doing things like automatic template creation and editing. A lot of this stuff is quite tedious in Civil 3D and in AutoCAD, and so this is a suite of tools that helps you do this much more quickly, and much more efficiently. We do this in a variety of ways. One of the primary ways is we, we allow syncing with Excel. We take standards, many of them exist in different tables like the layer manager, and we push them out to Excel, allow you to edit in a much more efficient way, and then to sync those back to could be a different template, could be the same template, could be a new template that you're creating. And we're doing these sorts of things with layers, with line types, uh, styles, description key sets, figure prefix databases, all these major uh, standards interfaces that uh, frankly leave a lot to be desired and they can be quite tedious. And really the the importance of this can't be stressed enough. The standards and the templates that are created for your organization, all users are, are, are using that and every day they're creating drawings from it. So the better that can be, the much more productive, uh, the more productive everyone uh, else can be. So an hour of investment in your templates, in your standards uh, can really pay dividends across the entire team. So let's talk about a couple of the general tools in here. One is called Line Type Manager. And it's a base AutoCAD tool and allows you to manage line types through a graphical interface. So you're probably used to using a .lin file where you have to understand this kind of this programming language, so to speak. Uh, with this kind of odd syntax to define and manage and create line types. But you don't have to do that anymore with Line Type Manager. You load a line type file, uh, line type file right into a Line Type Manager, and it gives you live previews like you see on the screen here. And we can even edit those in an interface. I'll show you that in the software in a bit. We have another, another tool called Template Tracker. This is probably one of the most popular tools in the suite. It allows you to track and replace layers, text styles, all sorts of annotation styles, um, specifically text dimension and multi-leader styles. These core elements of your templates tend to be referenced all over the place. It could be in Civil 3D styles, could be objects in the, in the drawing, any number of places. You often have no idea where those things are being referenced and you spend your time hunting around when you're perhaps trying to clean up your template to get rid of some unused layers, right? And you can't get rid of them. It tells you you can't delete them because they're used elsewhere. Template Tracker is gonna tell you where everything's being used and allow you to quickly swap it out or change it at once. Layer Boss is a tool that we take advantage of that Excel syncing I was mentioning. We can take the entire layer manager, that core set of your standards, and we can export that entire thing to Excel and we get a real smart export. And I'll show you what that means in a bit. But basically, it exports our line types, our plot styles, our line weights, all that comes out into Excel. So we get all the information that you would have when you're working right within AutoCAD, but all the power and flexibility that you gain by working in something like Excel. We can also take our object layers this is the large table interface in Civil 3D that dictates the layer that every object that you might create, be it alignments or corridors or surfaces, what layer they land on, 
um, that is another, um, that one's even more painful than the layer manager. You can't edit more than run one row at a once. At once, it's a, it's a very slow interface. And then the final, final set of tools is called Survey Template Manager. And we take that Excel syncing uh, to a whole other level with this. We allow you to take your description key sets where you manage all your survey point standards. You export that whole thing to Excel. You can then create a whole new survey code list if you have perhaps a new client or standard you're working to. Or maybe there's just some edits to that survey code list uh, that the survey manager needs to do. And that person wants to do it in Excel as opposed to in the clumsy description key set right within Civil 3D. Well, we can do anything and everything we want in Excel with all of its power and flexibility and then sync that back to Civil 3D. As you can see in the graphic, it exports our lists of layers from our templates. It'll export our styles, not literally the layers and styles, but a list of them so that we can select and choose them such that when we sync back to Civil 3D, it'll specify and assign that layer or style to that point code. And then finally, what's the fourth big styles or standards interface in Civil 3D? It's the figure prefix database. This is like the description key set, but it dictates the standards, the layering and the styles for your survey figures. This is another interface, probably the worst of them all in my opinion, to work with. Uh, it's very glitchy. It's actually a file that runs external to the DWG, and most people find it very difficult to work in. Again, we get to take that, push it to Excel, do any kind of work we want there, and sync it back. So that workflow is very straightforward, easy to learn, um, almost no learning curve to do this, really. Um, and um, uh, this workflow of pushing to Excel, doing your work there and then coming back in the Civil 3D. We do that with half the tool sets in the Sim Manager Suite. So let me show you how that works. Then we'll come back here and we'll talk a little bit about um, how to get your hands on this and what deployment looks like and a few things like that. So first thing we touched on was Line Type Manager. And if you notice it, the first button on the screen here, this is actually a free tool all the light colored commands, uh, buttons are free tools. Here's our other suite of tools called the Sim Project Suite. Uh, this is a larger suite, it's for daily production tools. There's a variety of free tools in here as well. The other ones come free with a trial and then uh, come with paid licensing after that, of course. So line type manager, how does this normally work? Well, if we take a look at a lin file, a standard line type file, Normally, you have to work with this in a text editor like this. And that's a rather clumsy interface, right? It's not necessarily something you do every day. So when you have to do it, it becomes very time consuming because you have to remember the syntax to all this stuff. Um, and if you have a lot of line types to create or update, um, it becomes consuming, uh, time consuming as well. So with Line Type Manager, you never leave AutoCAD. You can do all your work right in here. What you can do is you can browse out to a line type file. That's what I've done, that same one we just looked at. And it loads and parses everything in the list right within this interface. And notice there's a preview down here. So the main challenge with working with line types is that you don't know what you're creating visually as you're doing it. And the syntax of working in that um, notepad editor is, is, is rather clumsy uh, and slow. But as we click on any of these, we get a preview. It's even specific to the font type um, of that line type. In fact, this preview is based on uh, exact AutoCAD plotting. So exactly what you see here is what you would get in plots. Okay, so it gives you a preview when you load that. And of course, we can create and edit these right in here as well. So let's say this one, I don't like some of the spacing around the word gas. It doesn't print quite the way I want. Um, I can highlight that, I click edit right over here, and it opens up an editing interface. Now how this works is instead of a list, a string of characters, I have different components. I have line components, spaces, text, and another space. In a minute I'll create 
a shape-based line type file from scratch, but here all we're after is adjusting these spaces on either side of the word gas. So normally it's a very much a trial and error kind of thing. You go to the line type file, make a tweak, save that file, come back to AutoCAD, import the line type, override it, yada, yada, yada. It takes you five minutes to do that, that simple trial and error. Well, in here I can simply change the value in the preview updates for me. That looks pretty good. Come down here, let's change that value. Uh, let's do this one a little bit more, tighten it up. All right, that's what I'm after. Hit OK, save, I'm done with it. Okay, it's a matter of seconds to edit and create these line types compared to minutes or hours, uh, depending on how much you have to do. Let's do another one. Let's create a new line type from scratch. Let's say this is a sewer line type. And by default, uh, it puts some line and space components in here for us. We're going to delete this space component as well as this line component. And we're going to start out with a line and then a space. And that's kind of the standard format. Now the sizing here, uh, let's increase these a bit. Let's go at 10 and a space of 3. And then we're going to create a shape component based on an SHX file. Okay, so Line Type Manager will read the SHX files referenced in your options pathing, and then it'll load it right here. And then it'll parse the shape files right within there so that you can select them right here. And then I simply specify the size, and notice as I do this, the preview is updating. Size looks like we need some rotation on there. Let's set it the other way. We need a Y offset, negative one. Okay. If we want to zoom in a little more, bit more, we can adjust our scale in or out. Now I can see in detail the kind of spacing I get around here. Let's, let's go ahead and add another space. Set that to three, perhaps two looks best. You can see real quickly, we can get a preview of what it looks like if we zoom back out. That's what it'll look like. That looks good to me, we'll hit okay. We'll save that, okay? And now that's written to the Lintype file. In fact, I'll go ahead and even show you. If I open this in Notepad again, and I scroll down to the bottom, there's that sewer line type I created. And I didn't have to come in here and work on all that. I can do it all with this visual editor, and it's all free. It's all part of, uh, it's the free tool in Sim Manager Suite. Okay, a few other things I can take that new sewer line type or any other one I might have created, I can add it to the current DWG. We'll go ahead and do that. If I close out of here, I can now grab, and I'll show you that line type is available in here. Let's say we wanna grab that sewer. Now that shows up in here. And I can also do the reverse. Say I've got some line types in my drawing like this that I don't have in my LIN file. A common thing as standards evolve over the years. I can run import and when I do that I can select objects in the drawing. It'll read the line types within them, give me the name of them. I can hit OK. As I do so I specify the rotation type I want on the characters, the shapes or the, the text characters in there. And then those will load right into my LIN file as well. And you can see there's the preview showing up. I save that, it writes it back to my LIN file, and I'm all ready to go. You can sort things by display or the actual LIN type sorting. You can come up here, you've got uh, different filtering you can use um, to trim down the list. You've got up down options here to control and edit the actual sorting of your LIN file. So that's Line Type Manager. Let's move on to Template Tracker. This is one I mentioned, um, definitely one of the most popular tools in here because it deals with all that kind of maintenance uh, that you're often um, working on with templates. For example, you're trying to clean up some layers that aren't needed. And oftentimes what we're doing is we come here and well, we don't need that, right? And it doesn't let me delete it. This is common in Civil 3D templates. These layers are referenced all over the place. Where are they referenced? Most of the time, they're referenced in one of my 
thousands of styles over here in the settings tab. What about other base styles like textiles? Textiles are referenced all over the place too, like this SHR textile. I can't delete this. I don't know where it's being used, okay? How many years do we go in our templates where we have just extraneous textiles sitting in there because we don't know how to get rid of them? This is where Template Tracker comes in. So I'm gonna open this up. Let's take a look at those exact layers and textiles we pointed to. Um, the Ciano table pattern. Turns out this is being referenced in a whole series of different styles, a lot of different table styles. Now I can grab any one of those and I can dive into the actual layer references and for the display tab in that style. Or if I know I wanna get rid of that layer, I can grab all the references to it at once I can swap this out. Let's say we want to go to Ciano table. And now I can just delete that layer out of here. Let's try that on another one. Let's do a C, a C tin boundary. That's used in a lot of surface styles. Let's grab that, swap that out for C tin, and delete that layer out, okay? So it finds references, allows you to delete them out very quickly. Let's look at textiles. We we're talking about that SHR textile. Turns out that's being referenced in a whole series of different block definitions in my drawing. Now, for one, you'd have to know that those are being referenced in the block, and then you'd have to go in the block editor and change each text entity that's referencing that style in each and every block. Here instead, I can just grab all those block references, and some of those are actually on the screen here. I've got some uh, some instances inserted here. I can swap that out, let's say for standard textile. And as I do that, if I come out here and regen my drawing, those will have updated. And when I've done that now, I can actually delete the SHR textile out of here, okay? It tracks all sorts of references. If I click on standard, I've got the default dim style. I've got entities in the drawing. I've got civil 3D styles. I can grab all of these at once and change the references. So they all need to go to annotate them, okay? All those references change. Similar kind of process for dimension styles, for multi-leader styles. All those core components in your templates that are referenced in Civil 3D styles, in different places in your drawing, you can easily track them and swap them out here. One thing you may have noticed, uh, we have this common toolbar at the top of all the, um, the applications. Up here, you'll find all sorts of support. If you click on help, a very detailed user guide will launch explaining the use of all these tools. If you click on the videos button, it'll launch you to a YouTube page with help videos specifically on that tool. If you click on support, it'll bring you right to the support team that, that's needed. You simply select, um, select your country and it'll contact you with your local reseller, PayPal in this case. And that'll give all the information like the tool you're dealing with, the version you're on, and you simply say, hey, how does this work? Or uh, this isn't working uh, in this particular drawing, right? Issues like that, we're here to help you out. And then finally, if I click on the About menu, it tells me the version I have installed. And if there's a new release with a new tool or an update that you want to get, you click on Download Latest Installer. It'll bring you to a direct download page where you can download the MSI of uh, the new installer. Now we have the latest one, so we're all set, but you can always go and check that. New updates are released on um, about a quarterly basis, depending on the application and the suite. So always new stuff coming out. Let's move on, let's talk about Layer Boss. And this is a multi-module tool that deals with uh, managing layer sets. And the first one it deals with is the most common one, which is your list of layers, your layer manager. 
And while this isn't the worst of interfaces to deal with, when you're trying to do major layer work in your templates, it leaves a lot to be desired. Multi-editing is often kind of tricky if you're trying to do work across description fields, okay? But it's basically a big table with columns and rows. And so what better interface for that than Excel, right? So let's go ahead and show you what that workflow looks like. We'll go ahead and export the DWG layers. Now here's the export dialog. We can export a lot with this. For one, we can pull layers from more than one drawing at once, like XREFs or additional drawings. We can limit things by filters. Perhaps I'm splitting a template into two and I just want to export a set of layers for a new survey template. And then we can include line types, not only line types that are in the drawing, but also line types that are referenced in my options pathing. So it'll read all those line types from the LIN files themselves. It'll add background colors to the export and it'll even include plot styles if you're using STB files. So let's go ahead and export this. Save that out. It's prompting me to open it. I'll go ahead and say yes right away. And then I get my layer manager basically created in Excel for me. Now we're all familiar with Excel, so I'm not gonna explain how to use it, but maybe just a couple examples of how quick things can be in here and why we wanna bring it to Excel in the first place. For one, changes, uh, you know, clipboard copying, pressing and dragging becomes quite easy in here. I mentioned it exports line types. It creates a data validation dropdown right here in Excel with all the line types that existed both in the drawing and in your line type file. You can copy and paste these around. Okay, plot styles, those export as well. Line weights in your drawing, those export. Even the, the binary fields that are just simply yes or no fields, it restricts those as well. And because we're in Excel, simple things like find and replacing, mass edits, across layer names or across uh, description fields uh, become really easy because we're in Excel. So let's go ahead and do a couple edits here. Let's delete some layers out of here. Let's go ahead and create a new layer. And let's even, let's even make a mistake, right? Because because it's Excel, anything goes, right? In the layer manager, I couldn't do this. I couldn't have two layers of the same name. But what's gonna happen if we accidentally did that in here? Or if I had an invalid character, or I did something that doesn't follow the AutoCAD rules? Well, the Layer Boss tool is gonna catch all that for us. So let me, let me show you how it works. If we come back to Civil 3D, I launched the create edit DWG layers and I simply path to that Excel file we just worked on. I'm gonna sync this to the current drawing and then we've got options down here. There's sync or add. Sync is an additive or subtractive edit with the Excel being the master and the drawing being the one that's updated. So if we deleted layers like you saw me do in Excel, it's gonna delete them in here. If I set this to add, it's simply gonna add any layers that are in Excel that don't exist in here, but it won't delete anything. So I click next, and it gives me a preview of everything that's about to happen. Here's that new layer I'm about to create. It tells me what it's gonna do. I have 14 different updated layers. I changed colors, I changed line types. I have a series of unchanged layers, of course, and then it, it flags the duplicate layers for me as well. Well, here's the beauty of this. You can come back here while you have it open in Excel or in Civil 3D. I can delete the mistake, for example. Come back here after saving that. I simply click reload. And now that duplicate layers option is gone. There's no duplicates, so I can move on. Now, I should expect to see some deleted layers but there aren't any here. And the reason may be obvious because we just looked at template tracker, right? 
it's because so often those layers are referenced in styles. And so down here I've got under the cannot delete category, because of references, I've got three layers. And here's those three layers I deleted. Now I can leave it as ignore because I, I might decide, well, if those are in use, let's not delete them. Or perhaps I know I want to get rid of them, and I can either choose a layer right here to swap it out with, or if I don't know where it's being used, I can actually launch Template Tracker right within Layer Boss. So there's multi-app synergies um, across the suite here. And then here's that reference. All those references to that layer, I can swap that out. And then when I close out of this, now that layer becomes available for deletion. And if I know that both of these should get the same treatment, I can go ahead and edit multiple ones at the same time. So I hit OK. We're going to delete those. And while we do it, we're going to swap out their references to a different layer. So I'll go ahead and hit OK. See the layer manager update, all these colors, the line type references. We've got new layers in here. Okay, All those edits push right to the layer manager. Now, if you had just a few tweaks to your template, you might just come right in here and do it. But oftentimes we're faced with long, extensive overhauls or changes um, or just creation of a new template. Um, creation of a new template with the Sim Manager suite can turn from 70, 80, 90 hours into a just a couple day job, maybe 20 hours of work. It's they're substantial projects. Um, and it'll take some of those major components of it and reduce the time uh, substantially. So now that we understand that workflow, I'm going to kind of talk through that same workflow a little more quickly, though, in the other places that um, we can do this in Civil 3D. In fact, it's every place we have a large table interface in Civil 3D where we manage our standards, we can now do this with Excel. So the second one here is our object layers. That's this table right here in drawing settings where you have this big table of all the Civil 3D objects and the layers they land on. Now this interface is, is quite a bit more difficult than the layer manager because I can't even shift select. Uh, I can't do any mass editing at once. There's certainly no copying and pasting. It's all a one at a time kind of thing. And it's quite slow and clumsy. So let me step through that briefly. It's similar to the other one, um, but you just have a few different options along the way. Let's go ahead and export that to Excel, and we'll open that up right away. And now we get the object layers in here. And now I can do things, obviously, like uh, the pressing and dragging. Um, oftentimes, we want to assign some of the same layers, right? So clipboard copying. Uh, becomes quite easy, all these kinds of things. Perhaps you want to have um, a new layer created. You can simply type that in right here, and then when we sync it back, it'll create that new layer for us. Maybe some of these we want suffixes with the wildcard operator to insert the object name. Okay, I'll go ahead and save that. We'll come back to Excel or excuse me, to Civil 3D. We'll run the Create Edit Object Layers and we'll grab that Excel file. And I'm going to turn on Create New Layers. We give the, you this option here because um, you may not necessarily want to create layers. You just simply want to make that, have that reference to a layer name in the object layer settings. So I'll hit Next. Here it gives me a, a report. It's telling me the new layer that's going to be created, all these updates. I'll hit OK to this. And of course, if we take a peek in our object layers, we now have um, those new layers, all these settings over here, created the new layer in our layer manager. Okay. All right, the next tool set is called Survey Template Manager, and it deals with two more of these major table interfaces. And if you deal with processing surveys, um, topo surveys in Civil 3D at all, you know that you have to deal with the description key set 
if you want to control the stand uh, the styling of all those points it's a great tool set it's uh, it's definitely worth using but you have to program all your survey codes into this interface you have to sign all the styles the layers and so on and this is yet another big interface that is very clumsy to work in so let's push it to excel i can export that whole description key set and this one's got a few different features um, than some of the layer stuff so let me kind of show you that um, the styles much like the layers and the line types those export uh, and of course we see those layers showing up right here um, we can obviously make any kind of deletions we want but let's go ahead and, and make a new code as well because i want to show show you one uh unique feature in here so you're building out a new code list for example and you need to create new point styles okay i can just simply type a point style a name of a point style and this tool will automatically create point styles for me and i can right here notice this is a, a unique column that doesn't normally show up in the description key set the block definitions that exist in the drawing those export with this excel file so I can, for example, choose my proposed hydrant block and tell it to be a part of the hydrant point style, and it'll create that new style for me, insert the block, and then build the new code for me all at once. So take that and multiply it by your 150 codes, and you can take a 30-hour job and turn it into about five hours. Okay, I can sign my, my label style uh, as well. Perhaps that's no display, uh, my layer assignment. so on and so forth come back here we'll run that sync we'll go out and grab that file now i can create a new entirely new description key set so if you're needing to create a new one and it's kind of a save as of your old one um, it's a great practice to take that export it out make your changes all your new codes bring it in and then create a new one could be in the same drawing it could be in a different drawing we're going to sync it to an existing description key set we have i've got some editing options here much like the layer boss tool i can sync or add if i sync it will delete codes that i deleted out of excel will delete them from the drawing and then i can also create new point styles here's that thing i wanted to do with the hydrant code so i'll hit next Again, gives me a preview of what's about to happen. We've got a new code being created. We've got some deleted codes. And then if we had any, it would count up our duplicate codes. So I hit OK. It gives me a little confirmation of everything that's about to happen to my description key set. OK to that. And if we take a peek at it, We've got codes deleted out of here. Here's that new code I created. And if I even dive into that, I can see that the point style has the hydrant uh, block assigned to it. Okay, so we can mass create styles in this way. Now, the final thing is arguably the most clumsy interface to work in, and it's the figure prefix database. This is the table that manage manages all the styling and layering of your survey figures, your automatically generated line work from your survey line work coding. And this one, you know, you try to create new codes in it. It's very kind of glitchy. You're deleting codes. Uh, it's very clumsy to work in. And so this one, um, much like the description key set, we can export that out. I'll grab this description key set. And it gives me a nicely formatted Excel export. Again, giving me the styles that exist in there so I can easily make these edits uh, in here. So I've got new codes to make. Simple copying and pasting. Okay. Save that. And then the, the operation is the same. 
right? There's export and there's basically import for all those major table interfaces um, across Civil 3D. Okay, I'm going to sync it to the existing one, but I, again, I could create a new figure prefix database. And I'm going to also create new figure styles in case I type out a new one. Here it gives me that report again. I've got a couple new codes, some changed codes, so on and so forth. I hit OK. Again, a confirmation of what's about to happen. And then we're on our way. And if we take a look at that figure prefix database, we'll see those new codes showing up here. I was able to do it all in Excel without having to work in here. Now, I was just doing a few edits at a time here, right? And you might wonder why I go to Excel just for those few edits. Well, you're often doing a lot more work than that. I just want to give you a sense of the workflow, the process of how these tools work to allow you to manage uh, the, your standards that much more quickly. So with that, let me wrap up with a, a couple um, more items. And kind of the, a summary of the Sim Manager suite itself. The point of this is to create better content in less time. Content is all these standards that are created for your teams to generate drawings for their projects. If we can do that, that's a big time, uh, uh, a lot of money saved. And often, those of you who are doing this work, managing templates and so forth, you're often doing production and on the side having to do all this work. You also, you, you're typically very busy people, and so you often don't have a lot of time for this. With the SIM Manager Suite, we get to work in Excel much more efficiently instead of all the clumsy interfaces that you find in Civil 3D. With a lot of these tools, it helps you much more clearly understand your templates and content, like Template Tracker. We can understand where all those references are. So you don't end up providing and maintaining templates that have just extraneous layers or textiles or, or that sort of thing. And here's the, the number one reason for this suite of tools. Better content makes for more productive staff, right? If I'm a daily production user and I have to choose between 200 layers versus 120, that's easier for me, right? If my styles look exactly the way, need, they, the way they need to be each and every time I assign them to an object and I don't have to do any style overrides because everything is in tip-top shape, that makes me more productive. So it's not just about saving time for those folks doing the CAD management work. It's also about the entire production team and having better quality um, standards and templates. So if you're wondering how do you get your hands on this, you can download free trials from ctcsoftware.com. Um, that line type manager tool is free indefinitely. Like I said, the other ones are free with the trial, uh, and then they come paid with some licensing. The website shows uh, all kinds of detailed descriptions. When you scroll down, there's videos and screenshots uh, of how all these different things work. The licensing and deployment on this stuff is very straightforward. There's standalone. There's network or floating licensing. Everything is deployed through a standard MSI installer. Installer. This can be run on an individual basis um, or it can be deployed through an enterprise uh, process through SCCM or, or any kind of deployment uh, software. So all of the CTC suites work this way. They have all these uh, features available for deployment and for licensing. So with that, I thank you for your time and wish you a good day.